It's finally here. The Notion API, promising a whole new world of opportunity and productivity. If you've been following Notion at all, it's all everybody has been waiting for to take the all-in-one productivity tool to the next frontier. But you may be thinking, what's with all the hype? And what actionable things can I do with it today that is going to improve my life? My name is Conrad, and I'm a creator that is endlessly passionate about finding new ways to solve everyday challenges. And today, I'm going to teach you how to create awesome integrations with the official Notion API that will level up your productivity at home and in the workplace. On the launch day, we held a live stream where we built step-by-step -step the very first integrations available, and we've been building on it ever since. In this video, we're going to help you understand what the API does, how to connect to it through no-code tools like Automate.io, and go through a few common use cases to integrate Notion to apps like Google Calendar and email. Then stay tuned for part two, where I'll show you two really exciting integrations that you've never thought possible before and definitely won't want to miss. So let's first understand what the Notion API does and how we can make the best use of it. In a nutshell, the API gives you a secure way to share data inside your databases and pages with trusted third parties and also bring in data from these third parties into your pages. This is useful if you have data sitting inside Notion that you'd like to share with your other applications. For example, last year of the unofficial Notion API, I was able to create my entire blog site for free using Notion as the content management system, writing my articles inside this Notion database, and having the content automatically be transcribed into to a blog post on the web. Alternatively, if you have data sitting in other apps that you like to bring into Notion, like a form that's collecting responses from clients, that can also be done with the API so you don't have to manually import all this information. The official API release means that you can use other services to connect to Notion without having to hack it with code like I did. This makes it so easy for non-technical people to have a no-code experience and benefit from the connectivity between multiple tools. At the moment, there are two major automation services that offer integrations with the Notion API, Automate and Zapier. So let's break down the differences between these two services so you can know which one to use based on your current needs. Zapier and Automate are both no-code tools that make it easy for you to connect to different applications that they have already built integrations for. If you go to their website, you'll see a whole list. And so for example, Zapier has around 3000 apps that they connect to like Google Sheets, Gmail, Slack, Google Calendar, and many more. For Automates, you'll see that they have around 200 apps that they connect to, like Facebook, Salesforce, PayPal, Gmail, and others. So for a good comparison, we're going to be looking at three different factors. The first one is how many tasks per month does each provide? So for Automates, you already see that on their free plan, you have 300 tasks a month versus Zapier's 100 tasks a month. And on the next comparative upgrade at $19.99, you already have 2,000 tasks versus Zapier's $29.99 per month plan, which only has 750. So on a usage comparison, Automate already wins out. The next question we want to ask is, does it have the integrations available that we need? So Zapier has a lot of connections, but they're mostly for business use cases, whereas Automate has the basic connections if you want a personal use case. Also, you have to note that most of their most popular integrations are hidden under premium apps. So you can see that denoted under Zapier with the tag premium. And for Automate, you can see that they have the diamond symbol like so. And basically, you have to upgrade to their first paid plan if you want to have access to these premium apps. Which brings me to point number three, the flexibility of their pricing features. For Zapier, there isn't any step between $29.99 and their free plan. Versus Automate, between $19.99 and their free plan, they have a $9.99 plan, which gives you access to the set premium apps, as well as more active bots you can have, and also filters, formatters, webhooks, all of which I'll talk about later, but most importantly, multi-step workflows, which essentially allow you to do multiple things within one workflow. If I have a Google Calendar event as the trigger, I can both send an email to myself as well as add it into Notion. So there's many, many things that I can do with this connector. But one thing to note is that Automate's pricing changes quite often, so be a bit careful. But basically, for a short and easy answer, if you're a beginner that's just starting out, 
go with Automate's free plan. It has three times the task per month versus Zapier, and 300 is plenty for a casual user and you shouldn't need to upgrade any further. Connection-wise, it has all the major apps you'll most likely need to connect to, like Google Calendar and email. And for the apps that it doesn't have connections yet, you can use a webhook instead by upgrading to their first paid plan at $9.99. We'll be keeping a list of common API use cases in our companion article, link below, and which tools currently support them. I also expect other services to be coming out that exclusively serve the Notion API that may give better features or pricing than the general tools, which I'll be sure to cover in future videos. So let's show you how I combine Google Calendar and Notion for effective task management. This is how I use it every single day. First in the mornings, I spend 30 minutes inside my daily planning page to remind myself what key results and projects are currently in focus. In this example, maybe I have some fitness related key results, some school related key results, and perhaps even some happiness related key results. Then you can see that I have some projects that I have in focus. Again, in this example, maybe it's a student using the system and they have a course, they have some training for exercising, and maybe they're getting a dog to improve their happiness. Amazing. So if you scroll down, you can actually see that we have all our different tasks that are related to these projects in focus show up automatically in this section, in this what we call our quest board. So I'm going to take a quest from my quest board and drag it into my active quest just like so, so that I know that these are the quests that I have to work on today. Let's also just drag across all of these and drag them all into my active quest so that I can see, hey, these are all the quests I want to do and all the rewards I'm going to get if I finish them. It's also here that I'm going to set a priority for my task, depending on the urgency, the impact it's going to make, and even the difficulty that it's going to be, and in terms of how long it's going to take me to get the job done. And when I set these priorities, these priorities will also translate over to my next dashboard, which I'm going to show you, where I do most of my work every single day. So switching over to my Make Life Simple dashboards, this is where I'm going to be in day in and day out because this is where I have all my daily quests, so my daily routines and tasks that I'm going to do, as well as all my tasks that are coming from my success plan that are going to help me advance in certain goals or key results or even projects that I'm currently working on. You'll see that the four items that we had earlier are all showing up here inside my no time block, which means that I need to start scheduling them within the time block that makes sense. I essentially break up my work into three different time blocks, each lasting two hours each or four pomodoros, and essentially they follow my core loops. If you look into my calendar, you'll see that I break down my day into chunks, which I have three time blocks specifically for work and for meetings. I have another video where I go through a day in my life and explain how this works, but for this integration, whenever I finish a task and drag them into my done section just below, you'll see that I actually earn gold and experience points, which then level up my character. So my time blocks two and three are open for others to schedule meetings with me. And when meeting invites are sent to my email, they will automatically be added to my calendar. So how can I have those meetings add to Notion as well so that I can finish my meetings and also earn gold and experience points for spending my time in such a manner? So let's build your first integration in Automate.io. If you have a preference for Zapier, I covered this in our longer extensive live stream where I built everything step by step and gave more detailed explanations. So feel free to check that out. Go to automate.io and make an account if you don't have one already. You can make an account by clicking sign up right here in the top right and then filling out your full name, your email, as well as your password. Once you're in, you're going to want to click on create a bot right here. And then you're going to want to select a trigger app. So the trigger app in this case is going to be my Google Calendar. We're going to see this right here. Click on that. And then we're going to see a pop-up where we can select Google Calendar to authorize. We're going to use our test account right here in this example. So we're going to use Conrad Test. And you're going to see that it asks you for a few permissions. And when this happens, I want to give you two pieces of information. The first is that most of these apps that are going to need to connect your Notion workspace with any other app is definitely going to need all these permissions. You're not going to see anything different. The only thing I can suggest you do if you're worried about privacy is to always use a secondary account that is only used for these kind of connections. So in this example, I have a test account that is going to hold the meetings or whatever that I want to send to Notion. And for my Notion workspace, I'm only giving it access to the workspace that I wanted to see. Now that might be a bit overkill. It's up to you if you want to have that level of privacy, but just letting you know that there are options to segment the information that you're sharing with these tools. But for the most part, it is going to be generally safe. So I'm going to click allow just like so. And then it's going to say authentication successful. Awesome. 
So after I press save, you'll see that we have the Google Calendar show up and I can select a trigger event. So let's say when an event is added, that's when I want this workflow to run. So I can go in here and I can select calendar. So let's say again, test at conradlin.com is my calendar trigger. And then I can have an action app that triggers Notion. So what we want to do is type in Notion and then we can click on that. And again, a pop up will show up that shows that I need to connect Notion to my workspace. I can click authorize and then it's going to ask me to access my workspace. I'm going to say select pages and I'm going to say I wanted to select my demo workspace, which is what I'm using currently for this video. I'm going to click allow access and then it's done and I can press save just like before. So after pressing save, we'll see that we have a few actions that can be done. And in this case, I wanted to add a new database item. So I'm going to add a new database item. So it's going to give me a whole list of databases that are available. But what I want is to specify an exact ID. So going back to my Make Life Simple dashboard, I can go to my success plan. And again, you can use any task manager that you like. We're just using the success plan that we have inside our system. We copy the link. And then we can find an empty section in here just to paste the link and see what we're working with. So what we want to do first is remove this link so that we don't accidentally click on it. So let's remove the link. And then we see that there's this section right here that's going to be the database ID. It's going to be after the forward slash and before any question mark that you'll see. I'm going to copy this with Control or Command C, depending on if you're Windows or Mac. And then I'm going to go back to Automate and then paste it right here inside this Use Custom Value. And then I can paste it right here. So we can see that there is the database ID. Perfect. And then we can see that automatically all the different properties inside a database autofill here. So like things like areas, fear, sub areas, completed, recurring, tasks, share a family, everything that we use as properties inside this system. So now what we're going to want to do is link the output fields from our Google Calendar into the input fields or properties of Notion. So in the paragraph section, we're going to want to use description. And essentially, this is going to put this inside our page of the database item. The next thing we're going to want to do is go down and select type and make it a task because each event is a new task inside our system. After that, we're going to want to add the location inside our description. So location right here. Then make sure the status is ready to start because it's not a task in progress yet. Then we're going to want to make sure the name of the item, the name of the event is the name of the task. So we're going to call this event summary. And then for the due date, we're going to make this into the event begins. And we're also going to add an event ends date. Now, there's going to be one nuance for automate.io that you're going to want to know. If you just directly have this workflow run, the time that's going to get fed inside your Notion is going to be in UTC time. What we want to do is actually add a step in between these two steps that's going to convert this time into your local time zone. So let me show you quickly how that looks like. I'm going to add a plus right here. Proceed. I'm going to go into here and I'm going to do something called formatter and I'm going to format a date and the input date is going to be the event begins. I'm going to auto detect the target format is going to be date, date, month, one month, year, year, year. It's the automate standard format and the target time zone should be your time zone. So for me, it's in Singapore currently and then I'm going to do that. I also need to add one more for event ends. So I'm going to add another one for event ends formatting. I'm going to say format dates for the event ends. And then I'm going to also do the same thing here. Date, date, month, 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 year, 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 the standard formats. And then I'm also going to do Singapore like so. And then you're going to see that I have two output fields. So what we want to do is that instead of directly feeding in the event begins time from Google Calendar, we want to feed in instead the format of time. So I'm going to delete this right here and I'm going to say that I want the format of time instead from action one. And for the end dates, I also want the format of time from action two. Then I'm going to press save like so. So now we can start testing this automation. Let's go back to Google Calendar and let's start adding one new event. I'm going to add one between 11 to 12. Let's call it a new test automate event. Let's add a location. Maybe it's an online Zoom meeting. Maybe now we're going to also add a description. So right here, we're going to add remember to bring water to stay hydrated. And then we're going to press save. 
Once you press save, we can go back to automate and we can say I'm done. So we can check for a new event that just got added to our Google Calendar. It's going to run for a little bit because it's the first time running. We're going to make sure that the events can pass through and also all the steps that we have, like formatting the dates as well as adding it to Notion are completed successfully. Now, once this is done, we're going to go into our Make Life Simple page and we actually can see that it's inside now our no time block, which is correct because we haven't assigned a time block yet. So I'm going to take it and put it into my block number two because my block number two is between 10 a.m. to 12 p.m. And again, your blocks may be different. So I'm going to open up this new event and I'm going to see that it has a time from 11 a.m. to 12 p.m., which means it's one hour. So I'm going to take this bottom section and again, this is a benefit of using our system. We can copy this out for now and we can go ahead and click new awesome task or quest. So we can generate a lot of cool properties inside here, like difficulty right now. This should be a two because two times 25 minutes is one hour. Let's make this impact maybe semi high. And then we can go down to the bottom and paste this inside our notes so we can remember to bring water to stay hydrated, as well as seeing all these other information that is helping us make this task easier to understand. Now, if we go out, we can see that within our time block number two, we are now max capacity. We only have four Pomodoro spaces for each time block. And in this case, they're maxed out. So I'm not going to add another task into this time block to work on because I know that I won't have enough time to finish it. Another thing you can do is you can relate this task up to a project of your choice so they can always be aware what you're doing to push a project forward, whether it be a task or a meeting. And then when I'm done with this event, I can go down to my done section and then I can drag it in so I can see that I've finished this event on time. I've earned 100 gold and 50 experience points and I'm ready to go on my next adventure. So now that we're familiar on how to use Automate.io, we should be able to build the next few integrations really easily. Real quick, if you like the contents I've shared in this video so far, please do drop us a like and subscribe. It helps our channel reach more people like you. Let me know in the comments what other integrations you'd like to see us build. We'd love to hear from you. So let's go here into create a bot. And then what we want to do now is every time we send an email, so every time we forward an email that someone sent to us, or we just send a new email just as a new note, we want to send it into Notion. So we want to add a new database item to the same workspace that we had before. In this case, we again want to use a custom value because we have a lot of databases and we want to specify specifically which database we want to use. So going back to my Make Life Simple, I can find a database that we call our inbox right here. In our inbox, you can think of it like a staging area. It's where we put all our shower thoughts, new ideas, work that we have to get done, but just really quick notes that we're going to put down and categorize later. So the first thing we're going to want to do is copy the link like we did before, just like so. And then I'm just going to paste it in an empty section just over here, maybe so that I can start working on it. I'm going to remove the link and then I'm going to copy only this section again after the slash and before the question mark going back to automate pasting it inside. So now what we want to do is map the data coming in from our email into Notion. So first thing we want to do is make sure that the name matches the subject of the email. So just like so the heading we can have empty because what we want is the paragraph instead to have the text body. So before we press save, we want to get the email address and it's going to show you a pop up just like so. I'm going to copy this email, click save and then turn on the bot and then it's now going to wait for live data. I'm going to click on compose and then I'm going to send the email out to that same email that I just copied with the subject, maybe new shower thoughts, right? One, two, three. And then I'm going to add some more notes in here. For example, now remember to talk to X and Y about Z and pick up groceries, et cetera, et cetera. And again, remember this works even if you're forwarding an email. So if you have an email that you'd really like to translate into a task immediately, you can just forward it and have that automatically create a task inside your notion space. So I'm going to click here on send going back to our make life simple. We can now see that there's a new shower thought one, two, three here. And then we can see that all the information that we sent through email shows up inside notion. And if you'd like, I can go back to my daily planning page and then I can see 
my shower thoughts, right? And then I can drag that into any project that I'm working on currently. So for example, if I drag it into getting a dog, I can go to getting a dog. I can see that this task is right here, put it into my task session. And then immediately I'll be able to see that a new shower thought is an item inside my success plan. It's a task that I need to do. And then on the next day, I can schedule it into my active quest. By now, you should have a good understanding of how to get started with the Notion API and have basic ideas on how to integrate this new technology into your workflow. So far, you've learned how to take inputs into Notion from Google Calendar and email, and the process will be similar no matter which app you're connecting to. Make sure to check out part two, where I'll show you how to share data from Notion to other apps to get motivation and support from your friends and family and learn how you can create tasks with only your voice. Huge thanks to our patrons for making our work possible. Your support means the world to us and keeps this project going. Thank you so much. I hope you have an awesome week ahead. And remember, make work fun, get stuff done.